Hey, this is The Daily Overpass. My name is Eric and I make apps. Now today I want to compare working in a factory with reskinning your own apps. I used to work in a factory. I know I mentioned this before, but when I first came to England uh, 19 years ago and I couldn't get a job anywhere because of my history degree, uh, my first job was in a factory. And in fact, I got that job within the first few days of actually coming out here. And I got a job in a factory working at nights, you know, and for two months I worked in this yogurt factory packing yogurt, right? And it was actually, it was actually really, it was fascinating really, uh, the way that everything worked. If you haven't been in a factory before, and I haven't really been around factories before to see all the, the, you know, the mechanics of it and everything working. I mean, I would have enjoyed it much more if I didn't think that I was, you know, stuck there. If I knew it was temporary, I would have enjoyed it more. But when you're looking for a job, you're thinking, I got to get out of here. So you're just constantly, you know, stressing about stuff. But anyway, so we would have these, um, uh, you know, we have these giant machines, and they bring in these big rolls of plastic, right? And the plastic would go to one end of the of the machine that produced the yogurt pots. So, so they made yogurt pots, right? So, and it would go through, and there's, you know, and it would just press them. There was this mold that would press them into little pots. It would go through another another part of the machine. It would fill them with the yogurt. So it would mix the fruit canisters with the yogurt and the cream and all the things together. It would mix it in together, and it would go through the lid would be stamped on top, right, for the whatever brand it was. It would go, be stamped on top, it would go through the inkjet, and it comes to the conveyor belt. And that was the part I was at. I was just, you know, just, there was a bunch of people that were, you know, some of them were like really young, some of them been there for years, and I was the new guy. I was the foreigner. I was the American there. So we just, we take them off the conveyor belts, put them into boxes. When the box is full, we put them to the, to the pallet. Fantastic. I highly recommend it. Right. That's not even there anymore, but anyway, but so every so often, you know, we would, uh, you, when the um, when the run was finished, when we finished filling up all the pallets, what would happen was we would not get new fruit, we wouldn't get new yogurt. Everything would stay the same. Uh, the pots, the big sheet of plastic would stay the same, but they would come through and they would get new lids. So they would just basically everything was the same except the branding was different. So it was like yeah, and it was a bit surprising to me. So it, it was like. You know, they would make yogurt for some of the, you guys might, if you're not in the UK, you might know these, not know these brands, but like Weight Rose and then it was Sainsbury. So there was like, they'd have the, the different store brand yogurt, but it was exactly the same. There was no changes to the formula or anything like that. Even the shape of the pots were the same. The mold was the same, but the, the labeling was different. It would go through and then we just start doing this, whatever. So, so they didn't change anything. They would just re, rebrand it, right? Okay, so why am I telling you this? Because when I, I think about this a lot when I think about reskinning, right? When I think about reskinning our own apps, this is something that factories do all the time as a way to save money. They could easily go through and see every time there's a new store or a new brand, they could say, let's just change everything. Let's, you know, be as inefficient as possible. Every, you know, let's, you know, Sainsbury should be a little bit different. Weight Row should be a little bit different. And you, I guess you can kind of assume it's going to be that way. But a lot of the times it's putting things in front of the right people. I mean, when you're a kid, when you're in the toy store, do you ever find like a toy, like a, like a, I don't know, whatever it is, you know, a, a generic toy, a hula hoop or something like that, and you would find it in the boys section and it's blue and you would find the exact same thing in the girls section and it's pink, right? This is just a way of using the same mold, the same, you know, mechanisms and everything to create it. But in software, when we do reskinning, when we reskin our own apps, a lot of times people have like a problem with that. So, you know, I, I, I don't know if you, if you guys have ever seen my apps. You know, we have uh, lots of different language games and it's usually the same core code and we'll have like, um, you will have like different metadata in it, different, um, uh, you know, like for learning languages, we'll have the same core code that, you know, to learn Chinese or to learn um, Arabic or whatever. And it's just the same mechanics as there, but we'll have new images, new designs, new language files, new, you know, we'll hire new voice actors to do everything like that. But trying to, you know, use that same code over and over again. In fact, when people ask how many apps I have, a lot of times I discount it because, you know, we've only done the code for that one, one time, right? There's a lot of, you know, configurable variables in there. We change it, but you're know, trying to get the most mileage out of that one bit of work that we can, right? And I know, like, and I know other people that I work with, like developers, like they just think that's not, yeah, you know, that's not real development. Reskinning is 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 not, you know, it's not real development because you know you're not doing it fresh each time, like like you're doing a performance art, like you know, it's like, and what you're doing is, you know, and and sometimes as a developer, I feel that way too. It's like oh, we're just. You know, we're just putting a new, we're just putting a new skin on this thing. But, but what we're trying to do, and every time we do this, we're trying to put something in front of the right people, right? It's the same thing 
uh, the hula hoop example that I just said, like you're trying to, you, you put it in the boys section, you could go, you know, that's it, we're gonna do a completely different, you know, whole new model, we're gonna spend all this money to create the girls version too, or you just say, let's make it pink, you know, let's, let's put it over there too. And a lot of times, the biggest problem we have with our apps is that nobody finds them. It's not that they download them and they say, say they're terrible, although you know sometimes that might happen. Most of the time, nobody downloads them and nobody tries them. And the reason is because either they're not finding them or they don't look compelling enough or whatever. So, in my opinion, it's fine to take it, take your own code and reskin it and just and rebrand it a little bit. I talked about this before with my big app called EarSpy, which has you know, millions of downloads you know, in this history, but we also have Ear Assist, which is targeted at a different group of people, but the code is exactly the same. Like, the color's different, the icon's different, you know, the, um, the marketing material's different, you know, we, we just, but it's the same app, but one of them's towards hard of hearing people, and one of them's towards spy people, right? We, you know, and that, that branding and that reskinning of, of it, it just really makes a huge difference. If I just went for the hard of hearing people, you know, all those, you know, the people who are just, you know, the, the imaginations of all the would-be spies would be lost. And if I just said, it's just a spy app, then, you know, we wouldn't be able to market to this, this other group of people. And those are the two top apps that I have, right? And it's the same with the language games and everything like that. So, I, you know, I, I, the reason I bring this up is because a lot of people do have a, lot, a hard time with reskinning. And I, you know, I actually, I'm not a big fan of, of buying code and reskinning it. I know a lot of people have made money from it, you know, and you know, I suppose it doesn't, if you're gonna change it enough, I suppose it's fine, but I just think there's too many of the same kind of apps out there. But for my own apps, you know, and like my developers and, you know, or designers, you know, they, they, you know, sometimes I can hear them groan when I say, okay, we're gonna do this again, but we're gonna, you know, we're just gonna, you know, give it a new, give it a new theme and a new design, the same way in the factory where we change the lids, we change the branding, everything stayed the same except it's, it's trying to appeal to a different, a different audience, a different consumer base. So, so anyway, when it comes to reskinning, I really don't have a problem with reskinning your own apps. You know, it's, it's, you know, I'm not trying to impress fellow developers. I'm trying to sell apps. And this is, you know, one of the big distinctions when, you know, when I was a developer working with other developers, a lot of the things I did was try to, you know, you know, my street cred as a, de as a fellow developer, but when you're out there on your own, you're trying to find, you know, try to find all those shortcuts. Anyway, that's just my opinion. Let me know what you guys think about that. You know, I've got lots of apps, I app, you know, reskin ideas on my own apps where I think, oh, you know, we should change this a little bit here, and I just haven't got to it yet. And other times where we just, you know, it feels like, you know, we have one bit of code and we're just gonna run that thing into the ground, and you know, that's just, you know, that's just the way it is. You know, I'm trying to get as much mileage out of as little as possible, right? And you could say, oh, you're not a real developer for doing it. In fact, I, you know, one comment I had, like, um, I think it was last month, said, this guy just, no, it was like, uh, he was saying that he hardly got any downloads. He goes, it's not like your apps, my apps, you know, I spent six months working on this thing and I've only got like six downloads. And it was like getting all upset with me as if the amount of time he put into the app, you know, like there's not a, you know, a little tick box on the um, on Google Play when you upload an app it says how how long did you spend on this was it was it more than six months oh and they give you preference no you're trying to put something to appeal to the right people and that that branding and the marketing side is is really important on that anyway I hope that makes sense today I guess it's just too close to the weekend so that's it for today I'll talk to you guys on Monday.